put these in your goodie bag. They are the first showings of a new typeface from Morisawa called Roll. Specimens were designed here in, uh, in Brooklyn by management. You can also see Roll on Fontelier, which is Morisawa's online marketplace. Morisawa are the dominant type company in Japan. They're quite old. They just had a party for their 95th birthday. I have a long and very happy history with them because I've been a judge of their typeface design competitions for many years. We were there uh, last month. Five years ago, they commissioned me to design typeface, a very ambitious Latin super family of, as you see, serif, sand, slab, and rounded in a wide range of weights and three optically scaled sizes. Uh, there was no uh, Japanese counterpart. This is Latin, not Latinji. And the object, the primary object of the, of the project was to strengthen Morisawa's Latin library for international use. I made a uh, presentation to the board early in uh, 2015, which was, uh, you know, I, I, I was given a, uh, a go ahead. And from a fairly early time, I decided to try to introduce some slightly unconventional forms in these uh, typefaces. You see them on the right-hand side of that uh, slide. Well, some of these survived into the final cut. Some did not, uh, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you that. Um, you know, it, 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 w it was clear that this was a huge job I felt I'd bitten off more than I could chew. I was going to be 120 years old before I finished it, you know, but to my <laughs> relief and joy, Morisawa seconded three Japanese designers to work with me on this uh, project. They came to the States on six-month visas. We found them apartments in Cambridge, about 15 minutes' walk from where I live. Uh, they arrived in June of 2015 and stayed until we'd all held all had a big Thanksgiving uh, dinner end of November. So here's the cast of characters, the character set. From the left, Shotaro Nakano, Sakura Taruno, and Kunihiko Okano. And I'll introduce them separately. As you see, whenever two or more type designers are gathered together, there are proofs everywhere, always proofs. So I pretty much let the indiv individual designers decide which part of the project they wanted to work on. And Sho chose to work on the sands. Um, uh, Sho, of course, uh, worked at Morisawa. But before that, he'd been at college in the States as a fine art uh, student before he got interested in type. So he speaks excellent English, which was a huge advantage because I don't speak any uh, Japanese. He also became our character set maven. Um, and this was another uh, aim of all of this, uh, to provide Morisawa with uh, a standard character set for their Latin and library. Uh, I guess we were discussing Italic at that uh, point. All of these three designers draw beautifully I, w I was really uh, entranced by these drawings. I don't draw at all. I work clumsily on the screen. But they made these beautiful drawings. Here's Sakura, who worked on the serif uh, face. Also lovely drawings. Look at that. And then this is uh, Kurihiko uh, with, the, uh, with the slab. He afterwards worked on the rounded uh, version. Kunihiko is a little bit different because he's not a Morisawa employee, in fact. He was contracted to work on this job. Uh, he has his own company, Showtype, and he's a very rare person in Japan. Uh, there are very few independent uh, type designers, but he is one. He's also a graduate of type and media in The Hague, so he had uh, much more prior knowledge of Latin type design than, uh, than the others. So. I found that my Japanese fellow designers were used to a slightly different working culture, I would say, from, uh, from mine, uh, more hierarchical 
uh, more, more structured. It reminded me a little bit of work of me working at Mervyn Fall or Linotype in Brooklyn in the 60s. So we had to sort of uh, work this out, and uh, I was able to pr convince them that they worked with me and not for me. I like this picture because you can tell from Sakura's body language uh, that this is not a subordinate designer taking orders from her boss. Uh, these are two designers getting it on, you know, and I don't know what we were hashing out here, but this was very much the mood, a lot of give and take, a lot of questions, a lot of agreement. Uh, Sakura and I turn out to work really well together. I was, of course, very interested to observe how designers skilled in kanji reacted to learning Latin and by acquiring some knowledge of Latin to increase that knowledge within Morisawa, which was an important aim of this uh, project. You know, I, I teach at Yale and have done for a long time a type design class at Yale, and there are certain things which are recurrently problematical for students who are getting their first experience of type design. You know, our alphabet is a jungle. I mean, we have all these uh, strokes going uh, at different angles and uh, so on. And I find myself very often saying to students, you know, your W is too heavy, your X is too light on this side here, and so on and so on. Um, I was interested that the Japanese designers did not seem to have as much of a problem uh, uh, with this. I, I, I was agreeably surprised. I'm guessing that that is for a good reason. You know, if you are working on kanji, uh, the strokes are not all the same weight, but they have to be the right weight, you know? Uh, this relationship of weight within the kanji, which is a rather simple one, they get many times more complex than this, of course, is absolutely crucial. Uh, so I think that accounts for the fact that when they came to Latin, they, you know, they, they their prior experience helped them with, with some of these things that students typically uh, find problematical when I'm teaching at Yale. Um, and I, I get the feeling that if my fellow designers were not based in Japanese, they were from, you know, Arabic, Devon, Ivory, Hangul, whatever it is, I probably would have found the same thing. You know, there is no typographic form of any writing system that I know of where the weight of the component parts is not absolutely critical if you're going to be able to read it. Here's another thing. You know, we, we, we have proportional spacing of, of type, and that is another thing that beginning students find uh, very hard, and I don't blame them. Uh, the Japanese don't have uh, proportional spacing. Everything's in a square box because they read tatagumi, yokogumi, I can never remember which is which, but they read horizontally and, uh, and vertically with equal ease. So all the kanji and the kana have to be in square boxes. But within those boxes, the spacing is absolutely critical. You can't just throw a kanji into the box. The bounding box has to, it has to fit the bounding box very carefully and be very neatly spaced within it, again, if, if it's going to be legible. So it's, it's a different kind of spacing than Latin spacing, but it's spacing, you know? Uh, and again, the form, the form and the space it occupies are critical to all writing systems, as far as I know. So it seemed to me that working with these Japanese designers, that there were certain skills that they had that were adaptable or transferable uh, to working with Latin, and I, I was very fascinated to uh, observe that. There were some things that changed during the course of the work as the result of the interactions between the four of us. When I first proposed the uh, text version of the sans serif, it had quite, uh, you, you see that at the top of the slide, um, it had quite a lot of modulation in the six in, you know, there's some some uh, stress there. Uh, as a result of working on it, principally with uh, Shotaro, and with input from the others, uh, it ended up much more monoline. I mean, it's not a geometric monoline sans, but the stroke weight is more even 
However, in the larger optical uh, uh, sizes, display and banner, the thick fin reasserts itself. And I kind of like this. I, I don't like these uh, optical series, which are rigidly programmatic. I, I, I like to see some sort of variation between them. Here's another example. I showed you these, I don't know what to call them, sort of plain and fancy versions of, of, of certain letter forms uh, in an earlier slide. Um, in, the, in the text serif, we used very, uh, you might say, ordinary conventional forms. But again, in the display, we introduced some of these uh, slightly yet less usual forms. Some of them looked like sort of upright italic forms. And again, this is, you know, this is, this is deliberate. Um, if you are designing a general purpose typeface, you do not want it to be generic. Um, it's very easy in the interest of versatility to sort of arrive at a vanilla solution, and I, I hate that. So uh, the, the, these changes that happen as a function of output size to the, to the type design uh, are part of the response uh, uh, to that. Rounded, you know, rounded sands are much more prevalent if you travel around Japan than they are uh, in, in the Latin culture both formal and informal. You can see how the sign writer has rounded those strokes on the right-hand side by sort of twiddling the, uh, the brush. Um, I say this about them being much more prevalent in Japan, but Roger Black was telling me the other day that they are gaining in popularity uh, uh, in the Latin culture in this country in particular. It's so, it's a very good thing. Um, so we waited until the sands had been sort of largely defined before starting on the rounded, and it was uh, uh, Kunihiko who took the lead uh, with this. So you've got your sands and top here, so what's the problem? You, you, you know, you round the stroke ends and the, and the uh, terminals, but actually it turns out really to be rather difficult. And you see an intermediate version there where the rounds are rather round. But then the final version at the bottom, they are kind of uh, a little square, a little less rounded. Um, in all, Kunihiko did three versions. His very first one at the top there uh, looked kind of a caricature. It had a very strange kind of kitsch feeling. It, it reminded us of Hello Kitty. Uh, that, that there are people here who will give me a hard time if I say that uh, uh, Hello Kitty is kitsch, but you, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, and here's the result. You know, this was the first rounded sands that I'd ever had anything to do with, and it was an eye-opener for me. Uh, I, I think, I mean, if Roger's right, it's a, it's a very good thing if they're getting more popular because they make extremely legible uh, typefaces. So uh, when the uh, three designers, Sho and Sakura and Kurihiko, went back to uh, Japan, there remained a huge amount of work still to be done. Two more designers joined the team in, in, in Japan, uh, Ai Hander and Yuya uh, Kobari. Um, and my, la my last three slides, this one and, uh, and two more, are, are examples of PDFs that went backwards and forwards the whole time between them in Japan and me in Cambridge. Uh, as we continued to work closely, but remotely. Note the reference at the bottom of this slide to Kent. Kent is Kent Lou. Uh, Kent is, has an unrivaled knowledge of the sort of typo technical questions that are being posed in this slide about Superscript, numerator, denominator, scrub, blah, blah, blah. In, we're in the deep weeds here, but Kent really knows this stuff, so we lent a lot on his expertise. We also benefited very much, I must say, from uh, uh, very constructive help and criticism from uh, Cyrus Highsmith, who's now a, a, a Morisawa person, but he, he, he's kept a sort of eye on this project uh, for a long time. 
So here are some coding queries. I mean, all these proofs I got from them were so beautifully laid out. I mean, it's almost worth making some screw-ups and the kerning in order to get a document like this, put it right. But it's really, it's really elegantly done, you know. I, uh, it, it, was a, it was a real pleasure to get these done. So diacritics, God, yes, did we ever uh, sweat the diacritic? Uh, and again, I'm sure that uh, this particular uh, PDF would have uh, uh, had uh, Kent's eyes uh, on it uh, as well as mine. So when, when a designer first came to join me in, in Cambridge uh, and we were getting into this, I said I hoped very much that they would get credit for what was obviously going to be a major contribution to it. And they were very skeptical because as far as they knew, no designer had ever had their name on a Morisawa typeface. And I'm very happy to tell you that in the colophons of these uh, little booklets, you will find their names. They are, are fully uh, credited. So I'm grateful to the uh, senior people at uh, Morisawa for, for uh, agreeing to that uh, very willingly. So credit has been given where it is certainly due in this uh, rollout of role. Thank you.